let's get into WrestleMania 40. We're going to talk about our experience because it was the best experience of my life easily. So we hit Friday Night Smackdown. We hit a quarter of the Hall of Fame. We okay. hit yeah. NXT. We hit WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2, and then Monday Night Raw. We basically did everything there was to do besides go to uh, WWE World because we just didn't have time. Um, yeah, so briefly touching um, SmackDown was great. Um, an, a great go home show. Um, and then uh, followed by the Hall of Fame ceremony. Um, I did see Philadelphia crowd was catching a little bit of slack. Yeah. So let me go to bat for uh, me and my fellow people in the crowd. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I saw the first thing that they said was it was like so disrespectful that a bunch of people left um, like after Heyman since Heyman went first. Um, when Heyman was done, it was after 11, dude. Like, yeah, we had NXT the next day at noon. We had to be back in that stadium in 12 hours. Like I was and like not no disrespect to anybody else, but obviously Heyman was the headliner. Why did they put him first? Like, I feel like they put him first because they kind of knew people probably wanted to leave. Yeah. Um, but and also uh, they said people were being very disrespectful, chanting what and uh, stuff like that. Um, it was literally because we couldn't hear um, like the mics were literally so low. We could hardly hear Roman. Um the only reason we could hear Paul was because he's loud as hell and it's Paul Heyman. Um, but like we were chanting what? But we were also chanting, turn the mic up. We were chanting, we can't hear you. Like, um, so yeah, that's what that was about. We literally It was a legitimate hear. what, not like a like, trying to be like a dick. Yeah, what. it was a legitimate like what are you saying? We cannot hear you. Yeah. Um anybody else who's in the crowd can uh can also attest to that. But with that being said, I'll briefly touch on that night with um, one of the most magical experiences of the weekend, for sure, uh, which was Paul Heyman's uh, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame and his induction speech. Um, I mean, can't put it into words. Uh, the guy uh, starting it off, getting the You Deserve a Chance, of course, in Philadelphia, ECW chance, and he starts it off with, you're damn right, I fucking deserve it. Um, and he does, man. Um, there's so much that this man has done, and there's so much that he continues to do on a regular basis and that he's going to do. It, he's just, he's the man. Uh, there's no words to describe the impact he's had on the industry. Uh, like I said, me and Mark don't need to sit here and talk about how Paul, how great Paul Heyman is for 15 minutes, you guys know. Um, so, yeah, just being guys uh, from the area where ECW you know, originated and all that stuff and uh, being guys that, you know, are so passionate about pro wrestling but aren't uh, necessarily interested in being pro wrestlers but would love to be involved in some sort of way. Paul Heyman is like, I mean, the godfather as far as that stuff is concerned. Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, yeah, he's the man. Paul Heyman, greatly deserved. Your Hall of Famer, 2024 Hall of Fame. We did get some cool shirts old picture um, of uh paul Heyman on it that says the did. effing guy i um i actually got mine right here oh hell yeah uh, hopefully the effing hall of fame guy yeah so we each got this one and then um we talked about it before wrestlemania uh yeah. i kind of i don't want to say i predicted it but i predicted it if they had this shirt uh it was an automatic buy wrestle effing mania shirt right here um and then Dylan got a pretty sweet uh, ECW style shirt that says WM40 with the purple and barbed yeah, wire like logo. Yeah, the old Pope purple um, logos. And the cool thing about these is the scratch logo WWE. Yeah, hell yeah. That's a nice little detail right there. Um, so, yeah, the Hall of Fame was awesome. I don't know why they put Paul Heyman first. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, yeah, not sure why they put Paul Heyman first. If they would, That's the first time they've ever put a headliner first. And it was um, like... All right, SmackDown ended at 10, obviously. Then they were like, all right, it's starting. The Hall of Fame starting in 10 minutes. I don't think the Hall of Fame started until like 10.30. Yeah, and then I mean, Paul went. wasn't done until after 11. Yeah. Like, and then we left after Paul, and we didn't get home till like midnight. Yeah. Um. So, like, and we only had to go a 
couple blocks away. So it was like if we had to like drive home, would have been crazy. Um, but I guess we'll move on to a little bit of our experience at NXT. Uh, NXT was great. Um, it was uh, we had great Ooh, seats. We'll, yeah, we'll say that Ooh, our our Wells Fargo trick. Center seats. Uh, they really. Um, I think if you bought a three day pass, you probably knew. Um, that was definitely the way to go. Like even if you weren't going to NXT, you could skip NXT, save money, and get better seats. Um, but we didn't skip NXT. We went to NXT. Um, and that was great. That was a great show. Roxanne is your is your new champ. Um, Ilya uh, retains. Um, and then uh, of course in the main event we got Trick Williams taking down his former best friend uh, and his former partner. Carmelo Hayes, who is now, uh, I'm assuming, going to be main roster bound, it seems. Um, Probably during the draft. Yeah. So, and then we go uh, to that night, Saturday night. A um, little bit of a chilly night. Uh, the wind was, it was It was mainly the wind. The wind it was, was very windy. It was just the, the wind was fucking nuts. Like, you got a second where it was like, all right, this actually isn't too bad. But then you would just get... And of just wind wind we're beats da- you down and we were like dude. lucky enough to be down like relatively low like yeah. we were in the 100 section so i can't imagine how bad it was in the 200 section you know what i mean like yeah being up in the heavens yeah like that that was probably terrible um so i would say i cut the crowd a little bit of slack uh they really seemed i i rewatched wrestlemania i don't know if you have yet i um, haven't but they were really harping on how cold it was on Saturday. Um, they were really trying to, it seemed, they were like, hey guys, the crowd isn't that bad. It's just cold. Um, but I also think, I don't know, like we were there, the crowd felt like pretty lit. Like they were definitely more excited on Sunday, but um, I feel like it might have been an issue. Like I swear, I think we, it might have just not been coming across on TV. I don't as think well. it was coming across on TV because like, maybe because of the wind. I don't know. Like, well, and it was like, probably due to the wind but then it was also like it the crowd wasn't bad enough to be like oh this is a bad crowd like yeah, it, was it was great weird. like it was electric. Well, no and i'll say like i rewatched it and i was like oh wow this is like quiet it wasn't that quiet in the stadium like um part of me thinks they might have just like not had the mics turned up loud enough as well like um i think it also is tough to like come across on technology because um i posted a video of la Knight's entrance and, like, the crowd was so loud, but, like, it didn't come across on, like, social media like that yeah. either. Um, and then, yeah, so Saturday was obviously, uh, uh, it, it was great. Saturday was awesome. Um, Saturday, I, I think match of the night for me on Saturday has to go to Sammy and Gunther. Um, I think they told a story throughout that match. It was so cool. Like, you didn't have to know anything about them going into it but you could tell gunther is this long-term dominant champion sammy is this underdog type of guy um and you know they really had you thinking that gunther was about to get this w for a little bit there um and then the brain buster off the top rope um that's kind of when i knew when he hit that i was like brain buster that's a rare move for yeah dude um, reached deep into the bag of tricks. Um, that was his finisher as El Generico, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, or it was definitely one of his signatures as El Generico, if not his finisher. Um, and then you hit the double Huluva kicks for Sammy to get the win. That was my match of the night uh, for Saturday. Um, and then I'll have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, the Rock definitely did better than I thought he was going to do, just as far as... Um, they they did it very well to where it wasn't him having to just go like crazy in the ring like yeah. s- crazy stamina but um like there's no sense in them trying to do that if he's not going to be able to do it well you know what i mean you work around people's strengths not their weaknesses um and they 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 did it very well um there was the funniest moment of the night was when the rock went straight kick to the or no punch to the dick on seth and then launched himself into the turnbuckle yeah. that was <laughs> dude it's so much it did you see the clip Nah, it's even funnier really like, we saw it in person and it was hilarious but like the clip makes it look even worse yeah <laughs> i mean dude that's crazy <laughs> it was so funny 
Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Is there anything you want to say about Saturday? Um, man, Rhea's entrance oh, yeah. live Rhea was, was sick. very sick. I don't know how it came across on TV, but it was awesome to be live for that. Um, I think people were talking about Becky getting booed. She did get booed a little bit, but you put anyone up against Rhea in the moment, they're getting booed. That being said, Becky didn't get booed that much. Yeah, it wasn't that. Like, there was back and forth of, like, let's go Rhea, let's go Becky. Like, it was pretty um, evenly split. I don't know what people expected. Like, obviously, Rhea's going to get cheered because she's awesome. But well, And it's also, and then you have a, the hardcore fans that are there to where it's like, we're there, and it's like, we love Becky. We don't want to boo Becky, but it's like, we're going to cheer Rhea because we want her to stay the champ. Like, her losing yeah. to Becky is not the right decision. Nothing against yeah. Becky. It's just not the right call. So it's like, we don't want it to happen. I don't know. So uh, it was weird. Um, but And Becky apparently had strep throat, which was pretty crazy. Um, they delivered, man. I thought it was a good match. Yeah, and um, that that's another one, I think potentially best match of the night um i i thought as a whole it was really good the show um i thought they did the tag the main event tag team match in a really good way like you said Mm -hmm. not having the rock go wrestle 45 minutes in the ring like i i don't know they probably spent like 10 or 15 minutes outside brawling and it's it's easier to do that when you haven't wrestled for a (laughs) while um and we sat a hundred level kind of towards like if you're facing the ring and you're standing on the stage, looking down at the ring through the entrance ramp, we were like to the right of that. Um, and I will say we were worried about like our view being obstructed because of like the corner posts. I don't know. I guess it's a recent thing they've been doing, but they don't put anything on like the pillars yeah, that are above at, the ring. It so, was like, at least just like scaffolding. It. Yeah. Um, so yeah, night one was awesome. Um, don't hate on the crowd. I'm just like, just being there in person, the crowd was electric despite how it may have come across. Um, overall, um, I think Jimmy versus Jay was a little disappointing. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I think that we're going to get like that progressed more and more. Um, I was just expecting like a 30 minute, like match of the year, make you cry type Uh of, but that we didn't necessarily get that. Now I think they absolutely can do that. I think we're probably going to get that later down the line. Um, especially with the developments in the bloodline that we've, I don't um, know. Though. I, I think the Jimmy versus Jay is, is over for now. That kind. would blow dude. That would suck. You're probably right. Because why? Um, though? Why would that suck? Because I thought we were going to get this long, like, five six month feud and then they just had a feud that lasted a month with a shitty match um i feel that but i think part of me is like bro i don't know like this feud should have been legendary you know what i mean bro i don't know if jimmy can go like that dude jimmy can bro yeah but jimmy can go like that i think it's like bro i don't know like jim jay is a much better singles competitor than jimmy like yeah agreed but i also don't think jimmy's bad enough to where no i don't they can't put on like a classic match it was also just a produced like they, it was a badly produced match like there shouldn't have been that many super kicks planned um there shouldn't it was just it was a little weird but i think it's i think it's done because it doesn't make any sense because We'll get to it. Uh, I just don't. Th- I just think it more makes sense for them to come back together rather than apart. Um, yeah, it does. But, yeah. Like so yeah, said, night night one was super super good. We also planned it out pretty well. Um, to where like night one we went to the stadium a little earlier to like walk around get our merch and stuff, and then night two, um, we were fully locked into the show. Um, merch prices, I don't, they weren't terrible. Like the shirts were $40, but they're 32 online. And then you figure for shipping, it's around like seven or $8. Um, so not terrible, a little more than I would have liked to pay. Overpriced for sure. But like, weren't getting them much cheaper elsewhere, essentially. So they weren't that overpriced 
they're just overpriced in general. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's really just what it is. Um, um, oh, dude, we almost forgot potentially the best part of night one, or it may have been SmackDown when we were waiting in line to get in to the show. I think it was SmackDown, and we're waiting there in line. This guy's selling T-shirts. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bro, this man, he goes, he's got t-shirts with, like, Marvel superheroes on them. Like, the Avengers. He goes, t-shirts, Avengers, autographed t-shirts, Spidey autographed, Captain America autographed. Uh, claiming to have Spider-Man and Captain America's autograph on these shirts. Um, And I feel bad. Uh, looking back on it, I really wish I bought one. Just, like, I was just so in shock by, like, what was happening. Uh, that so someone funny. was like attempting to say that that was a thing, but honestly, the hustle I respect that respect so much it. for even respect. just doing that. The confidence I really wish I bought one. But that was great. If that guy's watching this, I'd love to get in touch. <laughs> work, work at a partnership. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. And then I guess fast forward to night two, um, oh, yeah. which is night two was. Like I said, we're like I said, we we're defending the crowd, but night night two, but we can't. I mean, night two, the crowd was hotter, and that's. I mean, it was a lot nicer outside, and night two was just overall kind of just a better night for the wrestling. Uh, the matches were crazy. You had Drew uh, getting his moment, and then getting it ruined by Damian Priest. An exact prediction made by yours truly. You could probably edit it together of me saying. I believe Drew McIntyre is going to win and he's going to get his moment. And then you could edit in a little clip of him holding the title with his moment, hand it to his girl and then say, and then that's when Damian Priest comes in for the cash. In. And then you see CM Punk beat him up and Damian Priest come in. The exact prediction made by this guy. Um, But yeah, dude, it was, uh, it we was electric. Two, like two money in the bank. Cash yeah, we've seen we our life so far. In too, um, a while back. And yeah, dude, that that was an electric moment. Um, the crowd was super behind Damien too. Uh, for people who those who don't know, Damien uh, trained at the Monster Factory, which is uh, like twenty minutes away from the stadium from uh, Lincoln Financial Field where we were at. So he got to do that like literally right where he uh, came up and learned how to do this thing. So uh, that that's that was probably really really cool for him, and another reason why I'm sure part of that crowd was so hyped because they know uh he's got some ties uh to the area so that that was really awesome for damien and it was awesome for drew because he did get his moment um but uh like triple h said in the press conference the triple exact h put thing, it a really good way yeah the the exact thing that drew mcintyre was telling seth uh he was too worried about everything else uh drew mcintyre ended up being his own downfall because drew was too worried about cm punk gloating and it costed him um so that that was an amazing moment um bailey got her moment um that was electric i i we just gotta get to the main event i feel like because this is just like it was insane it was it was one of the great everything we could have hoped for all all together i mean jesus man the cena return you had uh the Undertaker return, Brandy at the entrance ramp with Cody. Um, the just, ah, dude, it was awesome. It was perfect. Uh, the I magnitude think everyone... of it all was insane. Like dude, it was like, truly like that was the most like spectacle thing I've like ever seen. Yeah, it was nuts. Like and especially seeing everyone's reactions, like watching it at home. Like really puts into perspective like holy shit we were there in person for that dude like yeah i have it on video of when the undertaker comes out we'll probably clip we'll post, we have to, we'll post yeah that we'll have now. to post that come on come on come on
Ah! Um, but like, <laughs> maybe we'll like edit it together with this. But it's the Undertaker comes out, and it's literally me. I'm just like, holy fucking shit! It's the Undertaker. Dude, I'm just freaking out. It's it's, it's just like such like a pure moment. Oh of, like, god, it's true. Just like insane. the pure raw right, emotions. Because, and it's also because I thought Stone Cold was coming out. That's the reason I was filming. As did so everybody. It's a true, yeah, as did everyone. So it was a true, completely unexpected. And it's like not great because it's like the one rule I made for myself. I was like, I and I hardly took any videos um, of like moments. I took some videos of some entrances and some stuff like that. But I really tried to be locked in, just living in the moment. Yeah. Um. So when taking that video, I was like holding it under me and like not looking at the screen. So it's like shaky and a little bit all over. So that not that bad for for of all of that though yeah Uh, i did end up looking and then like zooming in at one point so i could get like a little bit of the face off solid vid i would say um it was fucking crazy it was insane it was insane and then cody finished the damn story man he did it he finished the story um and mark i guess you want to tell him i it was one of the craziest parts but right behind us uh sitting Uh, there was you can you can tell them. Yeah, the so we um our seats for night two were really really good. We got really lucky. We were right on the aisle. Um, yeah, we didn't know that when we bought them. So we got we were lucky club the level aisle seats. So we were right above hundred level, but right below uh two hundred level, and so it was perfect. We were on like the hard cam side, just off to the left, and then we go and sit Worked down. Very hard for these tickets. We're not gloating, yeah. by the way. We're, we're telling not. you. We spent too much money and it screwed us over a little bit. Um, but we had to do it. Had to do it. It all was always the plan to, yeah. to have the best seats for night two. We bought those first. We spent the most money on those. But we go and sit down and then people around us are sort of chattering and then I think it was the, the gentleman in front of us um told us too that uh Cody's family box was seven rows behind us. So yes, we turn yeah. around and look, Dustin's there, Ricky Starks is there. His family's there. So it was like that made QT it Marshall QT uh, Aaron Solo was there. Yeah. Like uh, it was crazy. So just seeing Cody finish the story and then turn around and you see like Ricky Starks like going as insane, if not more Nuts. crazy than everyone in the crowd. Yeah. Like as if he's a little kid watching a guy that he's a fan of. But we know it's someone that he's really good friends with. So it, it was a little more probably a little more deep to him uh, to watch him watch cody do that but um yeah man i mean that was was, that was that was it was surreal and like i don't know if it's the same for you but like i know for me anytime like i see someone in person that i've only ever seen like through a screen like it's so trippy to me yeah Um, so just like seeing this person who's like real that i've only ever seen through a screen and now i'm just like 20 feet away from them yeah. and not and seeing him and seeing him in that atmosphere too it was like seeing not seeing him in like as a wrestler like we saw him yeah, as a he was a fan friend and fan like like that was the one of the coolest things in my opinion is just like and like you said like everyone's freaking out could he finish a story and then you just like turn around and like ricky starks is freaking out the most out of anyone in the stadium probably so that was super cool um the match was insane literally avengers type movie um truly truly one of the most i mean i i don't it's hard to put into words like it was literally everything that we hoped that it was going yeah, to dude, be it was magic dude it was magic. um and like just getting like cena come out take out solo and then the rock came out and then they just had that stare down and then obviously the rock just handled cena then the undertaker came out truly truly incredible Cody undertaker the truly store. the only one b that nobody could be mad at yeah um, i was thinking i was like the only other person besides taker or stone cold could have been triple h like that people would have been like hype over um, yeah but we got taker the dead man cometh in the words of michael cole um and yeah that was that was just awesome and damn and then it went right into monday night raw raw after mania uh, we get that. You want to talk about a hot crowd? Yeah, dude. Uh, seriously, man. Uh, first off, just Cody comes out. You get the, you deserve a chance. Crazy saying you have no idea how much it means to him. Um, 
nonstop, dusty chance, Cody chance. You deserve a chance. The guy is on top of the world, and he truly deserved it. I, it was so amazing to be in that crowd. And then he gets interrupted by The Rock. And whew, you want to see a hot Philly crowd? That's a hot Philly crowd right there. Uh, did not want this man to say a word. Told him to shut the fuck up a whole bunch. Um, Undertaker was the first chant that we started getting going. Um, so it was. Uh, Did yeah, you the, watch that segment? Uh, not TV? all of it. Like I, I just watched like some clips. Um, yeah. And real quick, I would just like to formally apologize to those who watched it for it going on so long. Dude, yeah, that um, was probably miserable to watch on TV. The only reason it, it was we fun just, for like, us is because we were in the crowd. Yeah. But, like, the Rock was playing into it too much. Like, And we just wouldn't have... let him speak. Like, that yeah. was the thing. Um, and he said he's got to go away for a little while. We're like, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> um, it was like, that was probably, I that was probably like the most like hostile and like hot crowd that we've probably been in attendance for. Yeah. So, and then you have... Um, Essentially, it all ends with The Rock saying, whatever, you're, that weird moment, let me hold the belt, I'll hold yours if you hold mine. That was weird. So, that was um, a callback. Did you see that? To, yeah, what was it? So, I didn't know this. We thought everyone in the crowd around us was like, that was super weird. We didn't know it in the moment. But then, like, I was on social media, and it was a callback to when The Rock debuted the Scratch logo WWE title in okay. like 2015 or 14 and cody came out and kind of did like the same thing oh yeah yeah i forgot about that yeah um yeah. still odd still odd for sure um either or it was weird but then it all led to the rock saying your story with roman reigns is finished but our story has just begun uh so it definitely seems like we're gonna get the rock versus cody one-on-one -on -one at some point maybe SummerSlam, if not I mean, my money's on a Saudi show. I, don't know. I, I think there's better, uh, the best chances that it happens at a Saudi show. Um, yeah. Either that or SummerSlam. Um, I don't, like, they're not going to push that till next Mania because we got a lot more to talk about. Because we're going to get Rock vs. Roman next Mania. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and then we got... Uh, Ilya Dragunov had a great Ilya match. Ilya Dragunov uh, debuted. Roxanne Perez. Roxanne um and then we got a new uh we had damian priest come out as your new world champ that was really cool him and damian him and Rhea had the matching belts um and he was getting a nice you deserve it chance and he says you're damn right i deserve it uh he damian priest has worked incredibly hard man if there's like that man is such a grinder dude like the amount of work that guy's put in absolutely he deserves it um so we get that, and then we got a new uh, number one contender to um, the Damian Damian Priest World Title, and that is main event Jay Uso getting the singles push. Still, um, feels like this might end up getting involved in a bloodline story somehow. I'm not a hundred percent sure as of this moment.